it's early April, and spring is in the air all over the Berkshires of Western Massachusetts. And what I'm going to do today is take a walk around a previously unexplored ruin here and basically show you how you can use modern technology to find out who lived here, what they were doing, what was up, and I can tell you right now, you don't have to be a genius with this brook roaring by to recognize you're on the site of what was an old hill. So, check this out. There's a second brook coming in from up above, and then here we can see the foundation of what was once a pretty substantial water mill. I've been seeing this for years. You can see right here, the spillway where the water would have come out and entered, re-entered, dropped my phone. It would re-enter the river here. And somewhere out here would have been the, the water wheel. Look at this multi-stage mill that we have here. Look at those field stones laid flat. What kind of a mill do you think it was? Was it a lumber mill? A gunpowder mill? Look at the remains of the dam up above. I have never explored this before. I've been driving by it for years, usually when the leaves are on the trees. And I've always wanted to check it out. Look at, look at this stone over here. Those people back in the day, they, they did their fair share of work, huh? Clearly looking at a water mill complex of some sort. Was it a grist mill? Oh, there goes some ducks that I scared out of the pond. Puddle ducks, probably mallards. And I'll walk up here a little ways. This was a sizable dam right here. I mean, I'm standing on a rock right now, and the dam looks like it's going 10 feet, 15 feet above the level of the river. Look at the yellow birch coming out of the ruins of the foundation. There's some elm, a lot of yellow birch here. There's an oak. You can see right here the wall going down back toward the sluice way. It's possible that the water wheel, I don't know, if we're looking at a dam right here. The dam goes across. And the water drops into a channel through the wheel providing power for something that was over here. This is my assumption. It could have been configured in a lot of different ways. And what I'm doing is exploring. Then I'm going to go home. I'm going to go on the computer. I'm going to investigate some maps. And I'm going to show you all how to do it. And then we're going to look at LiDAR images. And we're going to see if we can come up with some better conclusions than what I'm speculating with now. I'm just out exploring. Like I have, as I said, not been here before. In addition to being unbelievably hard workers, these people were individually geniuses. Everything they did with these mills, they pretty much did memorizing the mills of their neighbors or somebody that they knew down in one of the larger cities. Okay, here we are up on top. And you gotta be careful up here because these are galleries. Look at this. Look at that. There's a, a gallery here, a gallery here, and these things can be dangerous. Um, I have had a couple of bad experiences walking around on these things in the past, so I'm trying to be ginger in my approach as I walk. But look at this dam. Amazing. I'm getting so excited. I'm forgetting to look down. But stone... Not formed by a professional stone cutter, but nonetheless cut and laid in such a way that 200 years after it was laid, it's still doing well. And here we are on the edge of the dam. And you can see down below, the dam went over on the other side. And I'm walking up. And look at that sugar maple. No, that's an ash. It's an ash coming up out of the foundation of the dam. Now we're looking down back toward my truck. This complex is about 
Oh, man. 150 feet from where I'm standing to where it ends in this odd triangular shaped area of land. And you can see how they elevated here so that they could impound this brook to keep enough water back to, I suppose, keep this mill going and get as much out of it as they could. New England has a lot of water, but the water isn't available all four seasons. Oh, look at this poor beech tree. Look at the blight. Beech bark disease. Cankered the heck out of this guy. Nice little tiger maple. Yellow birch right here. Did I say tiger maple? I think I did. I meant to say striped maple. Because I carefully descend. And these brooks will often have brook trout in them. Chain pickerel. Sometimes they'll have bass. This is fishing historic places, after all. I do have to talk about some of this. But let's see, if you find one of these old mill foundations, be really careful. Like I said, here are galleries, and the water could have been channeled through here and gone into these galleries to turn smaller wheels. They had all kinds of things they set up. There might have been multiple water wheels on this mill. Or just one big one. But we're going to investigate it and find out if the source is at my disposal and your disposal, what the heck we're looking at. So on the other side of this road, we're going to walk across the road, you can see the remains. And I'm going to start out on top, and then I'm going to walk into the interior of the ruin. And you can see this mill was being used probably through the 1890s, early 20th century. You can see some cement that's been applied. The staunch, uh, look at it. Oh, wow. So I'm out in the field right now. See the grass here still. This was once just a cleared field, but what do we have here? Would you look at that? That is something. I got to get down there and investigate. So here's a central, look at this, we got some brick. And we enter, look at this beautiful field stone. Unreal. And here we have some kind of an oven. Wow, I think it was an oven. I have no idea what was being done here. I'm gonna see if I can find out though. Well squared off, brick on the facade, right? Looks like it might have been, wow, I have no idea what I'm looking at here. I should grab a brick for my brick collecting buddy, Dennis, and I will do that because I can't come to a site like this and not bring him a brick because it's gonna make him happy, A, and it's gonna teach us something about the site, B. So let me grab a brick. Look, just what I was looking for, a brick for Dennis. I hope he likes it. So right out in front of the arch to that kiln or oven or gate, I don't know what that was, honest to God. I'm looking at this really old apple tree that I know still gets apples on it because I've seen them in the fall. You can see the tiger lilies growing all over the place. And I've told you that's one of the great indicators when you're out looking around, when you find tiger lilies, lilacs, sugar maples in rows, or apple trees, you know you're near the site of human habitation. So, hey, I'm just here checking this out, and we're going to go back home and investigate using the computer and some old maps that are available to you what this might have been. So... What we did was we went to a location in western Massachusetts. And in that little drive, we stumbled upon an old mill that I'd never been to before. What I'm going to do with you now is show you how you can learn how to find out what that old cellar hole or that old stone wall, that old piece of property near you 
once belonged to easily and without leaving your computer. You can probably even do it on your phone. So I turned off the lights because I want you to be able to see my projector board easier. And you know, this gives it a dramatic effect. The kids in my classroom like the dramatic effect. We're looking at a Google Earth image of Massachusetts and we can easily blow that up. And here we can see a close up of the area that I was traversing. And the Google Earth is cool. Some of you may not have seen the Google Earth before. If you want to play around with it, you can go to the layers feature in the bottom left corner, which allows you to access historical imagery. And I'm going to do another video where I'm going to show you how you can have fun with that. But in this case, Google Earth is really just getting me started. There's a couple other things I want to show you. Available to you and I, anyone that has access to the World Wide Web, would be the Frederick Beers Atlases. And there are various years where Beers works, and he does this stuff all over the United States. I don't know if your particular area is available, but I know Massachusetts and Connecticut are all heavily worked. And you'll notice that we have Massachusetts's Berkshire County, the 1876 edition by Frederick Beers, and we can see individual map pages. So here you can see Sandusfield, Savoy, Sheffield, Stockbridge. Oh, you got to love Stockbridge. But these are all available. And when I click on one of these, I can expand it and get a closer look. So I've clicked on the community in question. And we're looking at a map that still isn't detailed enough. But I can blow it up even more if I'd like. You can see we've really zoomed in now. But this map has inserts, and this is a village of what is now the town of Sandusfield. So I'm going to zoom in on the insert of this village to get a closer look. The village in question was once called Montville, and it was a site of several factories along what is now the Buck River. And the area in question that I'm looking at is delineated by what appears to say Rake shop. A rake shop? Let's investigate further. I'm not sure if I'm where I want to be. Am I looking at exactly where I want to be? I've done the Google Earth overlay. I've looked at the Beers map. Now I've gone to the LIDAR elevation map of Massachusetts. Every state's got one. Look it up on your computer and then either download the imagery or click on the hot image and play around with it. We're going to blow this up and go right where I was earlier in the video. So I've blown the map up some more. Now what LIDAR is, is a type of radar that strips away the trees. So we see nothing but the topographic features of the land without the clutter of the trees and the human constructions. This is ground radar, people. So now we're going to zoom in on the site in question, which is right where the cursor is, right here. So I'm going to zoom in on this right now. And this is why LiDAR is so cool. As I zoom in on this. Good afternoon, West Side. Good it's the end of the school day. Uh-oh, big North game for the lax team. So we can get in tight and look at the road that I drove up. And you can see that it will be crossed by the Buck River. And you can see the water course or the older water course of the Buck River as it moves along. And then right here and right here would be the cellar hole, the old dam that we investigated, the old mill looking thing that I thought might have been a furnace. You can see an old road. And as we play around with this, I'll show you something I think is particularly interesting. I think you will too. I zoomed out a little bit. So this is where we were, but look at the crisscrossing lines of stone walls built by those Merino sheep farmers long ago. We can see old cellar holes where there were barns or there were homesteads. And all this is visible 
to our eyes without trees, without having to dig around in the woods. Look at, you can see stone walls up in the middle here. I can zoom in tighter and you'll see them even more clearly. But I think this is crazy fascinating. You can see property boundaries really clearly from this distance. But anyways, looking at this, we can definitely see the footprint of the old mill. And I did a little bit of research. And having seen that I was looking at the Whitney Rake Shop, I went to a history of Sandusfield written in 2012. And I see that the town of Sandusfield fell on hard times, except there were a few bright spots. Deep in the heart of this history, we can see that after the Civil War, although the economy kind of fell off and the Merino sheet mania came to a conclusion, the Whitney Brothers rake shop continued to flourish to the point where they could endow the little brown church located a couple of miles to the east of the site of their mill with a, uh, a generous donation. Pretty cool. That's what you can do with LIDAR, with Google Earth, with a little bit of local history, and with those crazy beers maps. Originally thought rake shop, I was thinking rakes, like the kind of rakes you go out and rake your yard with, the kind that we've all got too much experience with living in New England, if you happen to live here, or anywhere else where the leaves come off the trees. But I thought exactly how much money would have been involved in creating these kind of rakes, and does that really make a lot of sense here in the Northeast. I mean, when you go to Sandusfield today, it does seem to be kind of a backwoods community, but it is, after all, in the heart of the megalopolis. And Yankee ingenuity was known for having great influence, and this is more like the kind of rakes we're talking about, made at the rake shop by Mr. Whitney and his brother, the hay rake that would have been pulled by one or more horses, the kind that you've probably seen off the side of the road. This would have involved a lot of the more modern agricultural practices that would have led to a little bit of money coming into the Whitney factory, enough money that would have led to the establishment of an endowment for the, uh, the little church down the road. These kind of rakes were the heart of the agricultural revolution and the kind of thing that you would have expected to see in New England. Now, I could be wrong, but I have a feeling we're talking about horse rakes supplying the southern Berkshires and northern Connecticut farms with the most modern of agricultural tools. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Fish in Historic Places and you get yourself a bookmark on those sites I just showed you, which I'm going to put a link to down below, and you investigate your own particular slice of heaven. You'll be able to find out if there's any cellar holes near you to explore. And, of course, watch out for those open well shafts. Beep.